Hello, Husky Middle School families. Mr. Quirk here. Just wanted to walk you through a step-by-step -step way of accessing our Schoology mm -hmm. courses uh, as we head into our first week uh, diving into online education and enrichment. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and I'm gonna walk you through how to access Schoology, how to join a course, and ultimately give you some kind of pointers in terms of what you can expect from each course at the middle school. All right, so once you're online, probably the easiest way to go through this, I'm gonna take it step by step, just in case. Um, and I don't wanna assume that people know how to do this. So if you already do, I apologize, but this is really for those who might need a refresher. Uh, it's for parents to kind of help work and guide your student through it, um, but students as well, if you forget how to add a course, even though you've been interacting with Schoology regularly, uh, this is a great resource for you too. So when you go onto the Conestoga Valley website and click on links for students. The easiest way is to head down to the G tab and click on that. Now again, your username is your first name underscore last name. Your password should be your student ID. If you have any concerns or questions related to you know, what your username or password are, feel free to reach out to your teachers or reach out to me uh, and we'll make sure that you get what you need. Once you click log in, you're gonna see the middle school homepage is your homepage. Every day we're gonna to try to post something on here, uh, whether it's a daily announcement or a reminder, that way we're kind of keeping up to date starting on Monday with what's happening and what's going on. Um, so please check this regularly. You'll see at the top, um, there will be kind of announcements that are pertinent to the whole school. Uh, and again, it's just a good way to, for us to communicate and to stay connected. When you get onto Schoology, the very first thing that you need to do to add a course is you need to go up to the link called Courses. Now, if you've been enrolled in courses already this year, you may find that all of your courses are still populated in this top list. That's perfectly fine. But again, we are transitioning from what school looked like prior to March 13th uh, to what school is gonna look like with this online enrichment model. So we are not gonna utilize your individual teacher pages anymore. Uh, we've created new school G courses to help guide you through your learning. So when you're here, and I've gotta drop this down a little bit, once you have that courses tab open, you've got to scroll over to the right and you've got to click on the link that says my courses. Now, this is going to give you a list of your courses that's kind of vertically driven. Off to the right, you're going to see manage courses and you're going to see a button that says join course. If you click on join course, it's going to prompt you for an access code. And this is where that list of access codes comes in handy that I sent out in my email on March 27th. So if you go to that list of access codes, and I'm gonna pull it up here too, and uh, I'm gonna split my screen, so bear with me. If you go to this list of access codes, you're gonna see seventh grade courses, eighth grade courses, unified arts, and additional student supports. My recommendation, and again, as stated in that, that original email on the 27th, is that seventh grade students really just focus in on your four core classes and these course codes. And then if you were enrolled in a unified arts class, you know, I would say take a look at one or two of those unified arts class. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and try to tackle eight different courses all at once. Um, but again, my recommendation would be if you were enrolled in art and maybe tech ed, that you enroll in those two courses and you navigate the learning experiences in those in addition to the four core classes. Now, seventh grade students, you typically would have you know, an English course or two English courses. We've condensed that down into one. And again, the whole goal is to make this as you know, manageable as possible for you to focus in on less things and promote and further your learning. So if we use the English 7 enrichment course as an example, I would type in, or you can copy and paste, uh, the access code for that particular course. And once I do, if I hit join, provided that I could type it in correctly, RK6X, there you go. Just as much as you guys are gonna struggle with <laughs> typing things in in education, so will I. We're all gonna make mistakes, we just kinda gotta persevere through it. So once you type in the correct access code, it's gonna say that you successfully joined this course. And again, you would wanna join the course with each of the four courses, uh, you know, whether you're in seventh grade or eighth grade. And again, unified arts classes that you were enrolled in currently in trimester three. 
Um, if an, an individual teacher reaches out to you, uh, like Ms. Grutzo or maybe Ms. Maffei or Ms. Bingaman, you know, their access codes um, are there as additional supports for you. Or if you're in gifted and, and classes, Quest is there and available for you. So you're more than welcome to access those pages, but those teachers will likely reach out to you regarding resources that are available on there that could be helpful to you on an individual level. So once I access and join that course, if I go back to my course tab, that course is now going to populate as English 7 enrichment there. And if I click on that course, that's going to be, bring me to my homepage for that particular course. Once here, you're going to see a couple different things. Teachers are still working throughout today um, to kind of finalize their pages, but you're going to see a welcome message on the homepage. And you're going to see a discussion post for questions and answers. The way that we set up the courses is that there's not one teacher manning it. We have multiple teachers manning each class. And the reason we did that is because we want to be able to help you learn and help you work through trouble spots as they become important to you. So what we don't want is for you to email one teacher and then have to wait for that one teacher to respond. And in the meantime, you're sitting idle and you're not really sure what to do. That's gonna add a lot of frustration. So to bypass that frustration, we have multiple teachers all logged into the same account. And if you go to the discussion post, this is a moderated discussion post. You type in a question, you type in a concern, you type in you know, something that, that's related to the material or that you need help. That message is gonna to go to all of the teachers that are logged on and running this, this particular course. In this instance, English 7. So this will go to all the English 7 teachers and they'll all be notified that a student had a question or discussion post. But the key is that no other student can see your post. It really just goes to the teachers. So this is an easy way for you to communicate and allow everybody to know that there's a need. Whoever is logged in at that time is gonna jump on board and in as timely of a fashion as possible, we're gonna address your question, address your concern, help guide you in the direction. Again, so that you're not sitting there waiting for a response. We're really trying to be proactive and help you through it real time or as, as quick as humanly possible. Uh, Mrs. Gassay and myself and our subject area supervisors are also logged on to this, so you may get responses from us. Again, we're, we're kind of going at this from an all hands on deck. Uh, we are 100% here to support you and help you through this. So use the question and discussion post um, you know, to try to communicate with your teachers if you have questions, or you can always email teachers using the school to email feature, but again, to keep things consistent and have it go to all the teachers in the page, I recommend that any questions or concerns or guidance that you need, use this question and discussion box so that everyone can see it and you're not waiting for one person to respond. You have an, a multitude of people who can jump on board and help you with whatever you need. Also on the course pages, um, you're going to see upcoming events. The teachers are gonna be setting up online conferences uh, with your class opportunities where you can log into either a Schoology conference um, or a Zoom conference or some type of open forum collaborative session where you can interact with your classmates and your teachers. You could talk further about the discipline. You could catch up and continue uh, to check in with one another to keep each other moving forward during this difficult time. It's a great opportunity for you to just drop in and, and interact and engage with the people that you've been interacting and engaging with all year. You'll see the upcoming events in each course. They'll tell you when they're holding those sessions. Uh, if they're saying they're holding a Schoology conference, it's something that you may not have done before. So to access those Schoology conferences, on the left-hand side of the screen where you have your page open, you're gonna see conferences. If you click on conferences, you're gonna approve that you're gonna, that you're gonna authorize that you can attend a conference. Um, but as a teacher puts a conference up, it's gonna populate here. Right now, this particular class does not have a conference set up. So you're not going to see anything. But if your teacher in the event page on the counter says, we're having a conference at nine o'clock on Monday morning and you're available and you want to pop in, again, completely optional. This is a, a drop in and, and reconnect. Then you open up conferences, you click on that conference and it'll add you to it. And the teacher will be able to moderate and lead the class discussion. But again, it's a great way for us to connect. The goal here is to try to enhance and promote further learning during this, this crazy time where you know, we're, we're closed, but we wanna make it as manageable as possible. We wanna support you as much as possible. And we wanna create as many opportunities um, to continue building off the positives that we had 
and to continue building those strong relationships that we've been doing all year. If at any time there are any obstacles that are getting in your way of learning, if you have any struggles with your learning, you need to reach out to us. Let somebody know if there's something that's getting in the way of you being successful and you continuing to grow because that's ultimately what we're here for. We want to see you continue to grow and we got to overcome these obstacles. And we got to push through all this adversity so that we can come out stronger on the end. But the key is, again, moving forward, you know, we can look at adversity and we can look at this difficult time in one of two ways. We can look at it as a setback and something that we want to shy away from, or we can look at this as an opportunity to push through and to work through uh, to make positive gains from. Really, adversity is inevitable. We can't control that. The adversity is in our way. It's how we respond to this that is going to make the difference. And so far, I've seen the teachers and I've seen students make a tremendous positive approach and, and attack at this adversity initially. But again, adversity and overcoming adversity doesn't mean you make one good decision at the beginning. It's about continuously making good decisions to keep yourself on track and keep yourself promoting it and growing as an individual. So we're no longer talking about meeting adversity. We're talking about practicing and, and instilling perseverance. You know, perseverance meaning that concept that we are going to continuously come at this with a positive attitude and a solid and strong work ethic. And we're, no matter what COVID-19 or what gets thrown in our way, you know, we're going to come out of this stronger because that's who we are. Um, so focus in on your education. Take advantage of these learning opportunities and don't hesitate to reach out, connect with your teachers, ask questions and, and be daring enough to explore this new world of education and, and selfishly, again, focus on what you need to do so that you can continue to grow and achieve what you want to achieve. We're hundred percent here for you, Husky Middle School. If you need anything, once again, reach out to me. There are no silly questions. Um, we just need to know what is causing issues so that we know how to address them. So hopefully this quick tutorial on how to access Schoology was helpful. Um, feel free to watch it again if you want, not that you want to listen to me any more than I already been talking, um, but we're here for you and we're here to help. So have a wonderful rest of your day, Huskin Middle School. We will see you at least virtually for now, uh, but hopefully face-to-face -face soon. Take care.